Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Rodian and today I'm going to be showing you all how to build a brick corner. Now, before we jump into the video, just a couple of things I want to clear up. Uh, not clear up, just sort of talk about. Uh, number one, to all you new subscribers, welcome. I noticed over the past few weeks of having a, a few more of you guys turning up, so yeah, thanks for uh, stopping by and watching the videos. I've had a few people asking about tutorials on how to uh, mix up practice muck, i.e. sand and lime mortar. I will make a video on that, hopefully coming next week. And also, I've had a couple of people asking about videos about disc cutters, grinders, etc. So I will make a video about that because I think they're, they're one of the most dangerous tools on site. So I think a nice little safety video of how to use one correctly would be, would be very well appreciated. I know a few of you want that. So I know a lot of you are builders out there, brickies out there, and just watching this just to see what's, what's going on. Um, so I know you know how to use them, but for those of you who don't know, then I think I'll make one. It might be, might be quite good, especially because you guys are asking for it. Right, okay, so got a bit of muck, got a few bricks. Let's jump on with it and uh, see if we can show you guys how to build a nice little brick corner. Right guys, this is the footing that we're going to be using. A uh, nice little base that I put here specifically for these tutorials. So we'll get a nice corner on here. I won't build it right up to the edge uh, to plumb up because that's a little bit cheating. So we're going to go in, probably a brick's width, brick's width in on both sides to get a nice little corner gone up. In fact, I might build it over here so we can see from both sides. So what we'll do is probably just build up three or four courses. I know I've had a, a couple of people saying they're having trouble and difficulty plumbing up the first three courses. Now, I'll explain more in a minute, but I would say just use a boat level to plumb up the first three courses. Now, I did have a comment saying that you shouldn't do that, but in my practice, over the years of me doing that, I, I used to use a two foot level to plumb up the first three courses, but I find it wobbles around too much, hence why I use a boat level for the first three and then from then on up. But I'll explain more as we go along. Okay, so a few tools you're gonna need. I'll uh, link, as per usual, all of these tools down in the description. I'm gonna be using a trowel, I've got a four foot level, two foot level, and the boat level, as you did just see. Those are the basics, which we're pretty much gonna have in every video. But in this case, because we're doing a corner, we want a nice 90 degree angle. I'm going to be using a framing square. Now, you can use a framing square, and there's also these folding squares you can use, where they're very easy to carry around. What you do is you take it out of the packet, and there you go, you have a nice, this one's a massive one. This is very handy for doing footings. And yeah, it's uh, very easy to carry around. Those framing squares, I prefer them just that little bit, just purely because this, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but where these join together, there's one or two mil of wobble. But in all honesty, that, that makes absolutely no difference when you're doing the, the brickwork. I've used these for years and my brickwork has never been out. Well, I say it's never been out, it's never been out more than a couple of mil. So, but in this case, because we're just working the small area, I'll use the framing square, it's a lot easier. Okay, so what you, <clears throat> what you wanna do before you build your corner. Okay, a little bit of background first. So corners are pretty much, they're the, the, the building stone, the more complex part of any build. When you build a wall, you don't build from the middle out, you always build the corners first, and then you set up a set of lines and run it in. Now the next episode we're doing on this will be me running it in with a line. But today obviously you need to build the corners first before you can do the middle bit. So that's what we're gonna do today. <clears throat> you don't wanna build, uh, last episode we built a little pyramid just to, to get you to get you feeling the trowel and how to roll a, uh, roll a muck around, etc., etc. You don't build pyramids and then you work out from there. So corners are where it starts. So what we'll do <clears throat> when you build your corner, it depends what you're building. If you're building an extension, then you, right, so I'm talking about where you start from, as in you need to square it off something. <clears throat> For example, this corner here, I'm gonna square it off the front here. We're gonna assume that this is, say we're building a, a planter or a garden wall or something like that. Assume that this is where your patio starts and you want it nice and square along the patio. So you'd, you'd come in, say 100 mil at this end, build the corner. <clears throat> well, I say build the corner, you come in 100 mil here, 100 mil here, so you can get that nice and straight and square against your your patio or whatever. And then you do exactly the same at the other end, so you get it nice and straight and nice and square. So you always have one point where you come off to square it off from. I should have said, we need a tape measure. I don't actually have one, so give me one second, I'll grab a tape measure. 
Oh, that was quick. Right, and also you need a pencil. So, before we start building, let's get everything set out. Measure twice, cut once, but in this case, you me measure twice, mark once, then build it. Saves you having to mess about later and take it down, etc., etc. So, in this case, yeah, but like I said, we have a patio, a path here, whatever we want to build, our garden wall here. So, let's say we'll go in 100 mil, so we'll mark 100 mil on the first point. And you want two points to come off it so you can get a nice square line. Come off the back here, 100 mil again. There, we've got two marks at 100 mil. Now, when you put your frame square, whatever square you want, against it, that whole way along, as long as this doesn't wobble in there out too much, you're going to have 100 mil, a nice gap there, and it's going to be nice and perfectly straight all the way along. So, that's how you set out. If you're setting out for an extension or something like that, then it's exactly the same premise, but you'd want to take a bit of attention and uh, look at the drawings. <coughs> Excuse me. Look at the drawings. Generally what you do, assume that this side is not the patio, assume, assume that this side is the existing house and you're building a nice, nice extension on the back of your house. You want to measure out <coughs> the width of the extension, mark it on the footings, do exactly the same on the other end. And on a long flank like that, you'd use what's called a ping line and ping, but I'll get into a bit more detail about that a bit further along in our, in our tutorials. But you, essentially, it's, it's exactly the same as what we're doing here. You'd mark it down, put your square on it, and draw it out and get it nice and squared and go from there. Okay, so what we do from this point, we have our framing square in the right place. We have our lines marked out. We've got 100 mil off. You can always double check it, because I said double check it. 100 mil. 100 mil, perfect. <clears throat> now what you do, just get your pencil and just mark that on that footing. <clears throat> like so. You just pop that off and you've got a nice mark ready for your bricks to go on. Now, from here, what I'll do is I'll just explain how to, just, just the premise of how to build the corner in a future video when I'm, I'm gonna be concentrating on setting out. So I'll do in a smaller sense, but how you set this out to get brickwork correct, but that will come in a future video. So in this case, I'll just show you how to build the corner, just so we don't complicate things. Okay, so from here, Get yourself a nice bit of muck. Last episode I showed you how to roll it, etc, etc. Um, so the whole rolling of the muck is a practice just to get your hand used to the trowel. Do it as long as you can, but once you, once you get to a certain point, you generally, rolling the muck, it takes up too much time. So you, there's a quicker way of doing it, but I will show you that in the next episode when it comes to running in, because that is the more more obvious time when you'd use it. But in this case, just roll your muck out, get a bit of muck on your trowel. And as, as I showed you before, the whole tap, 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 etc., etc. get it right. A little bit more on that corner there. You wanna keep it off that line so you can see it. Get a brick, have a look at it like I showed you last episode. If you haven't checked out last episode, there's a link down in the description for the whole playlist so you can go from there and have a, have a look through. You wanna make sure that not only, as I explained last time, you check, I check the brick every time and I spin it around to see which is the nicest side. Do exactly the same thing, but every time you put one that's gonna be seen both sides, you obviously wanna check that side and also the head side. This is the, this is the head and this is the stretcher. So you check the stretcher, check the head and then what I like to do, before I put this down, is I stand above it. You shouldn't ever really lay bricks kneeling down like this, but I'm trying to be in frame at the same time. But what I do is as I put, put the, uh, the brick down, I eye down and match up this edge here and this edge here to the line below. So as I'm on top of it, you can look down, you see this line running along here and this line running along here. You want to match up this part of the brick to that line and this part of the brick to that line, just so you get it in the right place. So I'll give that a little push down there. But I can't really do this holding the camera at the same time, so we'll swap back over. So as you're about to tap it down, get your, get your boat level ready, because you're going to check this for level. 
So give it a nice little tap, get it in the right position. And again, all those 45s from the last video, you want to scratch all that off so you can see your line. Didn't even get that bit. So you can see your line. Go from there, just check the level, see how it is. We'll start with that. I like to go a little bit high just so I can double check the gauge so I don't have to lift the brick up and put more muck underneath it. That's 74 mil, but for one mil, I'm not going to pick that up and do it again. Like I said, I don't really like doing it. So you just make sure you're in the right spot on that line. Perfect. Now I'm going to go this way. I'm just going to go two bricks. <clears throat> I'm just going to build like probably a three, three course high uh, corner here. So we'll go along two bricks. Everything is in stretcher bond. And thank you very much though to uh, you who commented saying that I couldn't, I kept calling it stack bond not rather than stretcher bond. So thank you very much for that. I was in, had a bit of a funny moment. I couldn't remember what it was called. So again, you find a nice brick. Uh, either of those faces is good. Explained last about how to butter a brick up. So again, if you missed that, then go back over to that other video, link in the description and you can learn how to butter up a brick. So from there, we'll get another bit of muck, just honk it in there. Get that nice 10 mil. A good rule of thumb, well, finger really, is if you have, if you don't really know what 10 mil is and you want to learn sort of muscle memory, the best way to do it is put your two fingers once you've butted it up, put your two fingers on the edge of the brick and that will be roughly 10 mil. Your fingertips will be roughly 10 mil. Some people have got bigger fingers than others, but generally on the whole, that'll give you a rough idea for 10 mil. As you can see, as I'm tapping this down, this one's moving around a bit. From there, you get two foot level, level it over, a bit low this side. Now a lot of people uh, say, don't worry about hitting the level, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's not so bad, they are designed to take a bit of a beat in these levels. So down in the comments, do you hit your level, do you not hit your level? As someone put it, 99% of people hit the level, only 1% admit to it. Well no, that's not right. Something like that, anyway, you get the idea. Everyone, basically saying everyone hits their level, only 1% of people admit to hitting their level. And from um, to range this through, so because we haven't got any brickwork below it, I'll explain this in a second. We, last episode we were talking about ranging where you get it nice and straight. You do the same thing, but this corner you touch on the top of the brick, and the other end you touch on the line on the footing, and then you can see where that brick goes. Line it up. That's beautiful, nice and level. Yeah, perfectly. So what we'll do? Get another one over it. Rinse and repeat, get a few bricks in there. I like to hold my hand just on the end here so I can push that back, get a bit of, bit of traction in there, a bit of stick, just so it doesn't move off that line. And just give it a few little taps, clean her up. I'll level on there, see what that's saying. I'll tap the level this time just to see. See, that's going to tap a few times because it's a little bit higher. So hit the brick, it goes down much easier. Right, there we go. A little bit out, it's fine. Ranger through. That's looking good to me. Right now, what we'll do, we're not going to put the square on it just yet. I'm going to put two more bricks through here, or maybe one. I haven't decided yet. That's the better side.
while I'm doing this, down in the comments, do you guys want me to have, I'm gonna put uh, background music in this, for this episode, because I had a couple of comments, people saying they're not so keen on the background music. Let me know down in the comments, do you want me to keep the background music, or should I just scratch it completely and just have me talking over it? Because I know there are certain times where I'm tapping away on the, the bricks and I'm not speaking, but let me know down in the comments. Background music, yay or nay? Right. Okay, that's looking good. I'll put one more on there. remember to take your snots off. Now, the muck at the back, in the UK at least, they're called snots. I don't know if your American counterparts or anyone else around the world, let me know, especially Aussies as well. Let me know, what do you call them? They're called snots over there or they're just called something else? Let me know down in the comments, I'd be interested to know. Right, that's all ranged through and looking nice and tidy. So from here, just to double check, make sure you're all square. You pop your square over the top. Now that is showing that that's out. As you can see that there, this side is nice up against the brickwork. Over there, we're a little bit off. So what we do in this point is we get our tape out and we double check the point where we were squaring off from. See how that's looking. Right, so that's one mil under uh, 100 mil, that is couple of mil over 100 mil so this side is out that side might be okay in that case we'll just pop this back on here no we won't we we'll put it on the inside my bad put it on the inside and we want to just sort of tap that square so they come out a bit have another look 100 mil 100 mil now that's perfect and then we'll check it again that's much better, but that was still out, so we'll have to tap the, move these bricks over a fraction. Right, now that's square. You must make sure it's always right off the square side. The other side you can move around. You want that 100 mil, or whatever distance you're doing, off this side that you're squaring off of. The other side you can move around to wherever. Right, so from there, as we're doing half bond, stretcher bond, whatever you want to call it, the idea is on the corner, all you do is you Flip that brick round that way so you get that half bond and again it's going to look like this again half bond all the way along like that that's how we're going to do i hope i've got enough muck for this but shaving and saving remember from last video i was saying every time you cut that muck off keep it don't chuck it on the floor you might come around to need that there'll be that one last brick in a line in a course that you want to do and you haven't got enough muck if you shave and save i guarantee you'll have enough muck right Get enough muck in there, you want to make sure you fill these frogs up. I like to have a little bit more on the top, just like I said, so I don't have to worry about picking it up and putting it back down again if it's not gauge. So we go from there. Now, from here, again, I like to eye down, because again, you're going to be standing up and doing it. So I'd like to eye down the top. So when I put the brick down, I plonk it down and I look down that corner and you try and line it up with the line that's on the footings the brick below and all the way along just have a look around see if you can get that somewhere nice and straight and then when you come to plumbing it up with the level you're pretty much already there so that's what it should look like you don't want it like that because you'll be all over the Dean Gaffney so you want to just nicely line it up as best you can by eye and then you get your level on top and level it up as you would do with the brick below so you want to give it a little wiggle to get it down first have a little trim up like so old boat level again on the top she's a good one the old boat level there not a stabila ox not, not bad little level that i'll tell you what they're a bit cheaper than stabila as well give that a little tap in awkward positions rather than using the front side of your trail as you saw just there 
I sometimes use the back side of it. Just, just easier to get in some of those little nooks and crannies. Right, so from there, first off, you wanna, you level it, gauge it, plumb it, range it. That's how you do it, so level it, gauge it. That is, again, a millimetre low, but between friends, what's one millimetre? You shouldn't ever do that. Normally when I'm building, it's always bang on, but for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna lift that up and do it again. I'll be here all bloody day. So yeah, one mil under 1500, which, like I said, between friends on the internet, you guys, I'll let that slide. So yeah, level it, gauge it. Oh, I'm trying to say the bloody words. Level it, gauge it, now you plumb it. Not plumb it off a building or something. Now what you do from here, it's much the same as when we were building that pyramid. I like to put at the bottom, you start at the bottom and then put your level up against it. And as you can see, that is a little bit out. So I tap this this way, to take it in. Again, I'll know what to push, I'll just push it. Because normally I give the brick a little tap, but as I'm pushing it, it's nice and wet. So look, you get that nice, flush up against that brick and then you come around to the other side and you do exactly the same thing onto the bottom onto the top now that is showing it's the other way so i need to push it oh i shouldn't really do that nothing yet. i need to push it the opposite way now i don't have enough hands to do that so i'll put this camera down so as in the other video i showed you if you want to move the top that way you tap this side of the brick if you want to move the whole thing this way or or lean it this way you tap this side of the brick so in this case the top needs to go that way so i'll tap this side of the brick what i'll do is once i've built this corner i'll show you exactly which where the plumbing points are that you want to put your level so a little freebie i'll tell you the first two straight away one in the center of the header of this side so 50 mil in from the corner and 50 mil in from this corner here and that'll get you the two plumbing points on here and then it's set basically every time you build a course they're at the end of each course but i'll show you once it's done so check that level as you do it and that's looking good check both ends because this end might be plumbed that end might be completely out so just check both of them And that's good. Now, so we've leveled it, we've gauged it, we've plumbed it. Now to range it. It's uh, a little bit different than when you were doing it before, just across all three. And what you do is to get the top one. Now this is a good way of doing it. So you just plumb these two corners up. You don't, generally you don't have to plumb this one up here if you're looking for speed. But I would say as a beginner, plumb both sides of the brick. But what you can do is you have one side of the level on that that 50 mil in from the corner that plumbing point and you put the other end of the level on the course below on that brick because that has already been plumbed up that course below is already plumbed and ready to go and that is showing that there's a little gap there so just just move that right and then you're good double check that it's actually moved so there we go that's better now from there i'll put one brick here and come along here It's a lot more difficult doing it on your knees than I thought it would have been. <clears throat> That's what she said. Right, get that in position, get the old level on her again. Tappity tap tap, get her in the right place. That was a bit of a tap, that one. It's nice and level at least. <clears throat> right, there we go. That'll be the height for that course. So what you do is again, you plumb this side up, just to make sure that one's out again. I don't know why that one keeps moving, sometimes with brickwork, I find that it, it can move. It, it, the mortar has some sort of elasticity to it. So you tap it and it goes back. You tap it and it goes back. So 
I like to give it a minute. On that other end, I'll tell you what, that's cool. That's perfect. Now from there, you range all the way through. I well, could see there was a little gap there, so just tap that over and you're good to go. That's that side. So rinse and repeat, do this side again. I'll just quickly go through it. Now, as you noticed, when I did this one, I put both of those down, then leveled it afterwards. That's the quicker way of doing it. Put one, put one. Once you've been doing it for such a, a long time as I have, you get a rough idea of what level is, and also you get a rough idea of what plum is. So that wasn't too bad. It only took a few taps. So I, I generally put two or three in one go, then put the long level over it. And this is where you tap the level because it hits them all down at the same time. And then you just range it through. But once you have come this way, as I did as well, double check your plums, always double check your plums on that corner once you've done a course, because as you push that brick in, it does sometimes move that over, which it did in this case. But as you go up, the more weight you put on the top, the bottom course might need tapping over, but as the more weight goes on it, it builds it down and it squashes it down, it compacts it, so it stays where it is. So once you come up a course above it and you plumb those corners, bottom one below might need a little tap over, but generally you're pretty good by then. And from here on out, it's pretty much rinse and repeat, so I'll show you one more time. So, one last time as it goes, you just plonk it on, you eye down the top, get it roughly in line. The more, the higher up you go, the easier it gets. Just give it a tap to get it in place. Plonky level on it. Gauge it down. So it's level, gauge, plum, range. That's 22, that's a couple of mils short. But I'd rather it be, well, it depends. So it turns out I missed the last couple of uh, couple of bricks there because my camera has a 30 minute record limit and I didn't know that so I apologize if I missed those last uh, couple of bricks but what we're going to move on to now is I'm going to show you the plumbing points of where to plumb looking down on this so there's there's four points that you want to plumb from and they are as follows so the first plumbing point is 50 mil in from the corner as you can see I put my foot against the bottom of the level to push it nice and tight up against the brick at the bottom and then the top as you can see the level is running all the way up and it is nicely level. So there's plumbing point number one. Plumbing point number two is exactly the same on the opposite side. So again, looking down, 50 mil in. And then from there, every course up you build, you want one plumbing point 50 mil in from the end of the last brick. So again, you put your foot on the bottom, give it a little plumb up, and exactly the same on the other side here. 
so that climbing point would be just there. Now that would be every course up, so if it was the course below, it would be here, and here, etc, etc. And just a, close, a closer up look uh, with the ranging, I'll use my longer level, this four foot one. So you'd put the course that you are laying, you'd put the level up against that corner, and the, the top of the course below it, like so. And as you can see down, that is touching all the way along. That is a nicely ranged through bit of brickwork because we know that that corner there is plumb and we've plumbed this corner up and the corner below is plumbed up. So no matter how many bricks you've got in the middle, as long as you range that through, if there's six, seven bricks, you know that all those ones in the middle are gonna be plumb because you're touching the level at one end and touching the level one course below at the other end that you have plumbed up as well. So they're all gonna be plumb. That's the faster way of doing it. But like I said, just for a beginner, I would say plumb up the first two on that brick and then you can, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna change my mind and say doing that is gonna to take too long and you might be tapping and tapping and tapping all over the place. So no, scrap that. I'd say the quicker you can learn, do it the ranging way because that's what I do, I've always done that. I learned doing it the other way, but I'll tell you what, no, learn this as quick as you can. I'm gonna take that back, do it this way. It's quicker, you tap the bricks a lot less, so there we go. It, it's the way professionals do it, so I'd say if you're gonna learn how to do it, do it that way. Plumb up one end, plumb up the other end, range it through, job done. Well, and there we go, there we have how to build a nice brick corner. Now, normally you would join this up, but I'm gonna show you in a second that this is miles too wet to join up because the sun's come out now and it's sort of drying it out a bit quick and the water's coming out. This is another downside of using lime mortar. Well, I find lime mortar, if you have too much water in it, this happens. And you don't wanna be scraping around when this happens because you get smudged brickwork. Let me show you a bit closer up. I don't know how well this camera's gonna show it up, but if you can see here, it's glistening. That is the water coming out of the muck. It does happen sometimes in the sunny conditions when it dries out. It's, I find especially with lime water, it happens a lot quicker. Now, if you start jointing up like this, it's just gonna go absolutely horribly. I don't have a jointer to hand, so I'm gonna do what you shouldn't do. I'm gonna use my finger and do it. But you see what happens? This here, that's smudging your brick because the muck is too wet. Now I'm going to go into a lot more detail about jointing up in a further video, but for the, I'm not going to join this up because it's too wet, but for the idea of how to build a corner, that is how you do it. And again, be careful scraping this off with, with your trowel because you can also see, look, the brick's a bit wet, so you're going to get smudges all over your brickwork. So if it's wet like that, just wait. Wait until it looks a bit like this. This is much better. That's a lot. It's still a touch wet, but it's not so bad at all. If I run my finger across that there, it's gonna come up a lot nicer, it's not gonna smudge. You shouldn't joint up with your fingers, but in this case, I'm just gonna show you how it looks. Because you see these little bits that are coming off like this? This is what you would want, and not these wet bits down here. Because in this case, from here, you can cut it off with minimal smudging. So, you'd want it a little bit more like, like this here. But I'm gonna go into a lot more detail about jointing up in a future video. So if that's something you're interested in, please do think about subscribing and uh, we'll, get, we'll get that sorted as well. Okay guys, there you go. That's how you build a brick corner. In the next episode, we're gonna be tackling laying to a line. So you want a couple of corners built up either end. So stick around for that. We'll be doing that next episode. Leave a like down below if you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you aren't already and I will see you guys in the next one. So take care, have a good one. See you later.